This was the expression of a tolerant vision of faith which profoundly influenced her actions as monarch, not least in the role she played promoting peace and reconciliation in Northern Ireland and between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. There was the example she set in Ennis when Queen Elizabeth walked from the Anglican Church to Scotland, Northern Ireland and England. In less than half an hour, the tenor bell will begin to toll here and will toll every minute for 96 minutes, reflecting the years of Queen Elizabeth's life. The poet of the first Elizabethan age, John Donne, also a cleric of the Anglican Church, reflected that the tolling of the bell signified the loss felt by the entire community when one of its members dies. He wrote, And therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. We've seen them really taking a part since the death of the Queen. I mean, and what a, an extraordinary day for them to embark on their first royal procession, as we're going to see at Westminster Abbey. But I think everyone was very keen that they should play a central role today. We saw the Queen Consort, didn't we? And we saw the Duchess of Sussex as well, I think, in one of the other cars. Um, some of the grandchildren arriving. Yes, there's Lady Louise Mountbatten Windsor and um, James Seven, the, the uh, Countess of Wessex's uh, son. There, they of course uh, played a, a, a key part in the in the vigil at Westminster Hall on Saturday night. Very movingly, it's it's been uh, a, a feature of, uh, of of these events that the, the, the younger younger generation, uh, as it were, the grandchildren have played a, a part. Um, that never happened with, with previous royal funerals as Princess Beatrice. Well, the Queen, of course, had a very close relationship with all of her grandchildren. She, she adored them and she enjoyed having those wonderful summers with her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren too. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the Abbey, congregation now more or less all in place now that the members of the royal family have uh, joined, but not all of them, of course, because the king and senior members of the royal family are across the road in Westminster Hall. They're at the Palace of Westminster, and they're the great sight of the naval ratings with the carriage. Just there in the background, you can see the great wheels of the state carriage, the gun carriage. Um, which since 1901 has been kept for the specific purpose of um, bearing the monarch's coffin. And the naval ratings will be in charge of taking that heavy carriage with the Queen's coffin, initially to Westminster Abbey, and then from there to Wellington Arch, ready for the rest of the journey by road to Windsor. But the ratings here, as we mentioned earlier, lots of them just been in the armed services, just been in the Navy for a few months. And uh, what a remarkable day for them and what a remarkable duty for them to be shouldering. The gentlemen at arms are just approaching one of the historic monarch's bodyguards. And, the, and the Royal Company of Archers, much in evidence in Edinburgh last week because they are the King's bodyguard in Scotland, and the uh, Yeomen of the Guard, who are another form of royal bodyguard, formed in 1485 by Henry Tudor. Uh, the Gentlemen at Arms, a uh, slightly younger institution from 1509. So the Queen Consort is uh, arriving at Westminster Abbey. I'm talking to David Hoyle, the Dean of Westminster um being shown in and uh, welcomed and they'll be making their way all the way down the nave george and charlotte the prince and princess uh looking immaculate yes i mean i think we we've come to expect nothing less of these two mm. lovely royal children and i'm just thinking back to the service of thanksgiving for the duke of edinburgh and they were there too so right now in westminster hall the coffin is being moved by the bearer party from the Queen's Company, 1st Battalion Grenadier Guards, to the door of 
Westminster Hall, ready for it to be transferred to the gun carriage.